Thanks so much for joining Zach and I today. We're very excited to have our guest host. He's one of our Smart Suite partners and relatively a new one, but just based on the start of his work, we're very happy with the service he's provided to our clients. And he's definitely one that you should look in working with if you're thinking about a Smart Suite partner. Today's webinar, we are going to talk about the connection and the implementations that construction companies are looking for in Smart Suite. So there's many tools for the job in construction, but we are demonstrating how you can have one tool to manage the processes. So any type of construction firm can find value in Smart Suite. It's simple to use. The mobile app's great. So there's a lot of different opportunities here. Our host today, Zach Stevenson, he's going to share a little bit about his background in just a second. My name is Emma Montgomery, and I'm a customer onboarding specialist here at SmartSuite. So I've had the pleasure of working with a lot of different customers in the construction industry, and they have seen great value in our product for their construction use cases. So I'm happy to bring some insights to that at the end. But today, Zach will be walking you through a demo. So, Zach, if you want to share a little bit about your background. Sure. Thanks, Emma. Yeah, as recently mentioned, I'm from just outside of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. As Emma also mentioned, there's like a ton of different things you can do with Smart Suite. Basically, if you can dream it up, it's probably doable to at least some extent, which is excellent. But yeah, so this webinar is going to be focused on mainly construction, trades, that type of stuff. A little more about me. I've worked with a lot of different no-code tools. Over the past four or five years, started as a hobby for my own kind of work and career. Then it became a side gig. And it's recently currently in transition to a full-time business over the next couple months here. So I'm really excited about what Smart Suite is building. When I came across them a few months ago, the support they provide is unbelievable. They listen to their customer feedback. And yeah, really excited for what they are doing. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. We're very excited to have you, and Zach has been such a quick learner on our product, and that's just not because SmartSuite is very easy to use. He's very talented as well. Now we're going to walk through the agenda that we have prepared for you today. Okay, basically what I'm going to go through, I'm going to show a demo that I have put together. I've taken a few elements from different projects that I've worked on in the past, merged some things, but basically we will share the link with you. I think Emma has it, and I can share it with you as well. If you want to jump into using this as a template, but as always, every business is a little bit unique, so customize it as you want. But I'm going to go through your projects, tasks, how they link together, employees and timesheets. I'm going to touch on equipment and vehicles and maintenance logs for those equipment, equipment and vehicles, your contacts, and I'm going to even touch on expenses a little bit and how you can relate them back to projects. And then... At the end, I will show a very basic ply integration for those of you that have not worked with it before. It's a really neat integration that works well with Smart Suite. That's what I'm going to be showing today. Anything else from you, Emma, before I dive in here and share my screen? Go ahead and share your screen and take it away, Zach. Thanks so much. Okay. As I mentioned, there is a lot of different use cases from home and commercial building construction, contractors trades like electrical and plumbing, trucking, road maintenance crews, all sorts of things. So basically don't get stuck on exactly what you're seeing here. It can all be customized, but yeah, that's, that's basically my intro and I will dive into what we're going to be doing here. Other thing I did want to mention is basically everything you see here is also available on Smart Suites mobile app. I think they put a lot of time and effort into developing that. It works really nicely. It's, it looks really good. So yeah, it's perfect for construction use cases where you're quite often when you're on the field or at a job site or whatever, you often don't have your computer with you. So you can jump onto the app and view basically everything that you're going to see here today. So that's something else to keep in mind. To get started here, the first app that I'm going to show you is projects. I've kept it relatively simple, but here is where you can list each project that you have and then all of the project relevant information. And I'll dive into some of these things a little bit further here in a second, but uh, using formulas and roll-ups and lookup fields, we're able to link to the different applications that we have across the top here. 
for example, if you want to rise your uh, labor costs because of all the timesheets that have been submitted, you can see like a live uh, tracker of how those are being allocated to each project. When expenses get submitted, you can see those and how they're allocated to each project. And it can give you the total project cost where you can compare it to your budget. So yeah, that's a little bit about the project view. Again, you can set up your schedule here for how many days you think it's going to take or your start and end date approximation, your due dates, you can add your project manager and so on. Other thing that you can do if you have, and I'll tie this part into the ply integration at the end, but you can track all your permits within the project record as well, which is pretty cool. And there's multiple views that are available within Smart Suite, and at kind of each different application level, they can become super handy, super powerful. So I'll go through some of those, such as a calendar view. So this just gives you a kind of a high level overview of when your projects are starting, ending, and any overlap you may have. The part that I think is really cool about Smart Suite is these dashboards. So it loads here. So yeah, here's a, a dashboard view that's built into the projects app. So this one's specific to the basement renovations project. So you can see your expenses break down by category. You can see your expenses versus labor, how the costs are being allocated. There's all sorts of things that you can add here. The cost compared to the budget, you can add your expenses directly. And then there's just add widget button here and I'll just scroll through them pretty quickly, but there's a ton of different widgets that you're able to add to this dashboard view. How are those created? Is that the data that you were just showing in the projects? No. So the cool part of it is, but the cool part about the dashboard is just because this view is living in the projects application doesn't mean it's only restricted to the projects table. So basically what this is doing, this is bringing in the expenses from the very last application down here. So when I go into the settings, I pick your chart type, you can pick your solution. And I believe you can select from any solution within that workspace. Is that That's correct, Emma? Correct. Yeah. That is correct, yes. So you're not just limited to the applications within the solution that you're working on you can actually go external to other solutions within that same workspace. So for example, let's say you had a timesheet, your timesheet logs in a separate solution, but you wanted to bring it into your project level, you would be able to do that. And that's, you have a bunch of different settings here to be able to get that information. That's a pretty cool part about the Smart Suite View dashboards. And then this one, yeah, this is just bringing in the expense form so that you can add all your expenses in line here while you're viewing other information. Sure, people have that question as well. So thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, it, that's really cool, really powerful, super useful for sure. Then another dashboard view. So I have this one set up for your project manager. So you can add any basically widget that would be relevant to them. So they could have their own individual and unique view. Again, add expenses. And then over here, project managers, if they're the ones responsible for approving timesheets, I'm just bringing in the timesheet view and you can add basically whatever you need to be able to view in there for them to go through their process. So that's also really handy. Yeah, I'm getting stuck on these dashboards because they're really cool, but yeah, they're a great view type within Smart Suite. Another thing within this project's view is the doc document designer. It's still being developed and I think there's more features that are coming, but it's pretty cool as well. So the document designer, you can add, create new ones, but I have one built already here and I'll preview it. So these are printable or you can export them as a PDF. And this is just a really basic, simple view. But what it's doing is showing the current expense total, the project manager, and then it's listing every expense that you have recorded within your application, the expense value, the date, and then the category. Let's say, for example, a customer or someone else within your company is wanting to see a breakdown. You can just export this as a PDF and send it off to them. So that's pretty handy. Again, you can add a lot of different fields, a lot of different elements to it 
based on the view that you are currently in. That's also a really handy feature that has been released, I believe, within the last couple months here at Smart Suite. Yes, and I have seen a lot of constructions firm, construction companies use this for to sign off. Soon the fig- signature field will be available. So certificate of completions I've seen, like I timesheets, expenses. Also, like initially when a project is being started, there's an estimate and the customer has to sign off. So creating this document designer is a really great way for them to see how much is this project and it cost. And then they sign off before they continue to proceed with the project. And I think I didn't add it. And I think that you guys did release that element that your fields can be added to the document designer already. I think maybe that was a couple of weeks ago. So that was something that I was waiting on. And I'm pretty sure that did just come out fairly recently. So that's handy as well. So across to the the tasks is a, a linked record type back to projects so that you can, I'll just click back into that for a second. So you can see here that this is related to the tasks. So if I click into that, I can see all of my tasks there. And this is where you can list them out, schedule them on your due dates, your start and end dates, your completion status, who it's assigned to within the company. There's task notes that you can add. And this task notes is a smart docs field type, which is really cool to think of Notion or Google Docs or any type of document editor. It's built into the record field level, which is really cool and handy. And the other really neat field type that is available within Smart Suite is this subtasks. So quite often, yeah, we'll have a main task within a project, but sometimes there's multiple subtasks that are required based off of the main task. And what's neat there is you can assign a due date to them. This is just a checklist field type. You can add in your new item. You can assign it to individual users as well. You can add however many subtasks that you need to add to that main task, which is also very neat. The There's a timeline view type that's available. So you can monitor where each project is at based off of this timeline view. And there's all sorts of different ways to set up your timeline view, whether you want to group by your status or project type name or whatever it may be, which is handy. And then from this view, you can just click into it to view those task details at a more granular level. And then there's the Kanban or Kanban view as well. So you can see each task at whatever status they're at within the project. So you have a bunch of different types of view types that are available to manage your projects and tasks throughout the Smart Suite platform. Now, I have a question about the views. So if you go back to projects, so there's a lot of different addresses there. And I want you to demonstrate the map view because I see a lot of people using the map view and even through make.com, you can, based on people's location, can actually manage the location and which projects are going to be working on in that day to delegate them. A technician will go to these three stops based on the, the proximity of the location. And that can all be automated and integrated through Make. I've seen yeah. that. That's another neat view. It's down here and I have it under my contacts. But yeah, there's a map view, which is really simple, really handy. It just makes it so easy to integrate the addresses. And I'll flip back there for a second. But the other cool part of Smart Suite is it validates the address as you type it in, similar to what Google Maps would do while you're typing in the address. And then from there, you can set up your map view really easily. Just select the field that you want it to bring in. And you have your different map settings. And it can show a radius of where each location is. I think that's what you were talking about and how it could integrate with make.com. Yes, like assigning technicians based on the location. So they'll be going to these three addresses because they're close by. And then these technicians will be going to these three addresses because they're close by. So efficiency is improved. I've seen a lot of construction companies in the morning, they're calling, they're planning, they're trying to figure out which tech is going where. So if everything's in one system and they know where they're going and they don't have to text or call each other. 
they just see through their assigned tasks where they're going really, really helps the planning process for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's cool. It's nice. You have a lot of different customization within it. And then as you can see, the red circle, it's just right here. So if you wanted to change it to 10 miles or kilometers, or you can show your distances or radius type view as well. But yeah, map view is super powerful, super cool. I was really ex excited about that one when I first discovered it within Smart Suite. I started. One more question. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of technicians, maybe they don't have experience with technology. As far as our permissions and seeing things that they're assigned to, are you able to demonstrate what the assigned to permission means and how that can be used on mobile? Sure. Right here, actually. So I have this assigned to field. So to keep things simple, let's say you had I don't know, 10, 10 different employees working with you. So you as the administrator, you would see all different types of records. So let's say we had, I don't know, a dozen more, 10 times this many records that you're looking at. It would get pretty confusing for them to be able to go through each one. So once you assign it to a certain employee and depending on the specific permissions and access that you're giving to the employees, whether it's on their iPad or on the computer or from their phone on the app, they're only going to be limited to the records that have been assigned to them and the fields that you've allowed them to see. So if you only want them to be able to see what their jobs are for the day, the location, and that it's actually been assigned to them, you can limit it to that. So it keeps it really simple and really clean for them to be able to view rather than trying to have to scroll through and filter through dozens or hundreds of different records and fields and so on. Yeah, you can get really specific and make it simple and basic for the end user if that is a problem. Thank you. And as far as, so we have the construction, the founder, the management, they need to see a lot more information than what a technician would see. Our permissions are really great for that, where you can actually run as management can run what they need to. But then we can have technicians only seeing the data that they need to through the permissions that you're talking about. Now to connect that with our feature of my work, do you want to maybe click in and see what that means? And it's also available in, on mobile as well. But if you don't mind just clicking in and sharing a little sure. bit about that. I don't know why it's not bringing it. It's up. likely because you don't have it connected to the status field. So you just connect those two and then it will appear in my work. But it looks like you have... so. As far as the tasks are assigned in this grid view, but likely when you're on a job, you'll just want one centralized place to see all the tasks that need to be completed. So my work is a great way for that to be your centralized system. Go on there, go on my work in the app and the technician, management, whatever, the, whoever it is can see everything that they need to work on that day. Yeah. I've connected it here now. It's up here in the top right corner of the little checkbox. If you click my work, this is showing that you have different categories here, overdue and upcoming and later. But yeah, from there, you can see all your different tasks. So if this one was assigned to today, and I'll change that quickly to here, it will show you everything that's available or everything that you're assigned to do in that day, which is a really neat feature. And it will bring in everything from across your entire workspace. So if you have assigned tasks to you, from five different applications or five different solutions within a workspace, you can see it from this view, which is super handy. Okay, so that's everything that I have for the task. Any other questions from the chat, Emma? I don't have that screen up right now. I, I would like you to go into to projects. I think we'll address two sides of this question. So basically okay. on the timeline view and maybe calendar view, we okay. want to be able to add different dates to the project. So let's go to timeline view. If Yeah, there we go. Perfect. That's good. Um, fine. Okay. So if you go into the date field there, let's say we want to add what the tasks are due. So you can actually add another field. Um, you would, you knew, you would need to add another calendar. So you have your task calendar. So below it, it says it, in this yeah. view, are you talking? Sorry, I don't, I'm sorry. Add it in the task calendar before. Over here. It's not one existing already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Calendar, okay. And just make sure those, the due dates are perfect. And now go back to the projects app. Since you have a calendar view already there. Just do once, it from here. Yes. And then you can add where it says add other calendars. 
you can go ahead and add the calendar that you just put in for the tasks. So you can see this is like your centralized calendar view. You can spotlight, change it. As far as subtasks, like checklist fields, not quite yet, but the best way to work around that would just be separate the projects and tasks into, or sorry, the tasks and subtasks into two different apps, because there may be a lot of subtasks and it might be better to do that as well. Yeah. And that's where it comes into a specific company, what their needs are and how granular and customized you want to get. But yeah, that's a really cool feature that I hadn't even dug into yet. So just learned something on my own webinar here, Emma. Cool. Great. And was there another piece of this that you were wondering um, about? One extra level that we'll be implementing, I'm sure, is the ability to see checklists that are that have a data sign. So I would really like for whoever is asking to put it as a feature request. So maybe Brian can put in the link to submit that feature request, or we can do it for you as well. Is there anything that before I'm going to open up the floor to questions? We don't have any, everything has been answered so far, but as people are typing up their questions, feel free to, maybe I can come up with some questions that I have for you, or you can just demonstrate something that you've learned as you've been working with your clients so far. Yeah, I've got more to go through here. I just didn't know where, go we're at, where you're at for a question. So yeah, no, okay. So this one, the employees and timesheets tie back and forth to each other. So this is where as a manager, you can keep all of your contact information, anything kind of relevant to your actual employees. So whether it's emergency contacts, their hire dates, how long they've been with the company. And then something I really like is this sub items field type. And what this can allow you to do is track the employees, licenses, tickets, certificates, whatever it may be. And you can click into it. Once it loads here, you can see the license or ticket name, you can add a description, expiry date, and you can even add the PDF or a picture of the license or certificate that they hold. And then from there, you can go a step further using a formula field to pull in the nearest expiry date. So then this way you can set up an automation in the back end to be able to notify you as management that they have a certificate or a ticket or a license coming due for expiry in the next 60 days or whatever you choose. So that's really handy too, because it's important to make sure that all your employees are staying kind of up to date with their tickets. And then from there, I will show you the next view. This is the new feature within SmartSuite. It was released in the last week or two, I believe. And this is just a roll-up field. So what I've done is the new feature is the filter. And what I've done is just rolling up any, any record that has been approved, but has not been yet paid. So this is helpful to accounting or whoever it's responsible for paying your employees. And I'll show you the next view here. So I gotta bring this up, it loads. So this is a form that's your employees can submit their hours from each day. They can select their name from the list, the date, what project they were working on, work performed. And then there's also a signature field too. It may not be required in this type of use case, but I just wanted to demonstrate that there is a signature field built into SmartSuite. And when you submit that, it will go back to the timesheets view. And from here, oh, this is where you're, what's that, sorry? Yeah. Oh, sorry, quick question about the forms. Yeah. So let's say that based on the type of timesheet entry, there are different fields that need to be included. Do you mind sh showcasing the conditional form feature we just released? Oh, yeah, I sure can. So I got to do it from here, don't I? There is a conditional form field form option. So if you click into, so this is, if you go up to the view, create your form, and then select one of the fields, there's this drop down here that says show field only when conditions are met. So I don't know if I have a good example here. I guess you can go into your hours when work performed is not empty or is not empty. 
it will pop up. They won't I'll be able to log their hours until you know, they enter what the specifics are of the work performed that day, and then it could pop up. That's where this is where you can add your different conditions. That's what you're talking about, correct, Emma? Yes, that's great. Okay. Thank you. I'll get back into it here. Again, this is where you can give access to your project managers to be able to see all the timesheets that are approved. So at the end of each day or at the end of the week or whenever they're, they have to go in to approve all of their worksheets, they can select that. And then from there, it can go off to accounting or whoever's required to make their payments. Again, this is somewhere where you could add a note automation. So automations are just into the job down here, automations. And from there is where you could add something that says after two days after being submitted, if it has not been approved, the project manager will get an email with a link saying this hasn't been approved because it's easy enough to miss something like that. So this kind of takes away from your employees missing getting paid or just hassles like that down the road. How are we doing for time, Emma? It's good, good. We have a good. request to talk about the, the vehicles. And okay, yeah. And me. In. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. I'm getting into that right here. Scroll down on my notes so I don't miss anything. Okay, so here, this is a, you can get as specific or detailed as you want, but imagine you have all your vehicles, all your equipment, whether you have loaders or excavators or dump trucks or whatever it may be, you can list it all here, add in your bin numbers, anything that's relevant information. And then down here, and I'll touch on this in a second, what's important is you need to have, if you want to set it up this way, is your equipment and vehicles in one application, and then you can have a second application that's called your maintenance log, and that's where you will have your form and records linked back to vehicles. So as you can see here, I have a roll-up field and lookup fields. So what this is doing is anytime a maintenance log is submitted for that specific vehicle, it will bring in the most up-to-date information. So I will show you here in maintenance logs. Again, you can set up a maintenance log form. So it's easy. Let's say you do your own work. You could have an iPad in the shop that has just has access to the form view. From there, whoever's doing maintenance on the truck can go in, select the unit or the actual vehicle that they're working on. And I guess I'll bring that up for you so you can see how simple it can be. Yeah, so on the iPad or computer in the shop, once the work's done and go in, select whatever equipment they worked on, the most recent hours, up-to-date hours, and part numbers and notes, and you can add photos if that's important to you. And then once you hit submit, it comes back into the maintenance log. And then here, if management has to review the work that's done, they can check that off to say it's been completed. But you can see what it's doing is, so uh, this Caterpillar here has three different time entry or three different maintenance logs entered now. And what's going to happen back in equipment and vehicles is it's showing the max number of hours or miles using the roll-up field. So that's cool. And then one other big thing with Smart Suite that I haven't found in a lot of other softwares is when you expand a record, you have the option to kind of customize the layout. So if you go up here to the action menu and you can do page settings, you have the option to do one column, two columns, and the 70-30 split. And you can bring in whatever information is relevant. And um, there's also this collapsed view or section. So you can hide information that you may not need all the time within that. So you can really organize and structure your data any way you want. And it makes it for a really clean view. For me, oh, the one last thing, the contacts is pretty simple. We did touch on that already. And the last thing here for me is the expenses. So again, this can be in a form and you can add your different categories, expense description, the value. So this is where back on the projects view or application, it was rolling up all the expense data and costs associated to the specific project. And again, that can be added through a form. And then, as I mentioned, I did want to quickly show you the um, PLY integration. 
this is a really simple use case, but really powerful and you can get as complicated or as advanced as you need to. But what I will show you is you could do this for receipts as well. But let's say you've applied to the county for a permit, you get that back in an email. Then from the email, once you're in here, there's this button. So this is using, can you see the play integration that I'm pointing at with my mouse? Yeah, so that's the icon you'd be looking for. It's a browser extension. And once you have it set up, once you click that button, you can see down here in the bottom left side, it's running in the background and then it allows me to select project that permit needs to be assigned to. And by the time I get back over to my projects, you can see it populated in here so that it directly from your email assigns the permit or receipt or whatever it is that you need to add to, to that record in your solution. That's it for me. Emma, is there any questions or anything that I can go over in closer detail? No, great. So the information about Ply, it's free to Smart Suite users. I just sent the link. So that's really, really easy to set up. And again, it just saves so much time. So thank you for sharing that. There's one more thing. We really want to have the link to this template. So if you go ahead and just copy and paste the link and put it in the chat, and maybe we could show them how we can access this. So if you just go ahead and put it in the chat for us, anyone who wants to download the template to your workspace. Of course, if you don't have a if you don't have a Smart Suite account just yet, please sign up with Zach's partner link. So you can go ahead and copy it here. I'll go ahead and put his partner link if you don't have a Smart Suite account. And Zach just put in the template. So I'll just label it the template here. Now, Zach, will you just show us how they can copy the template? So just paste the link in a new browser. Or yep. sorry, new window. Yeah. With that link that's right there, if you just, as long as you have an account or maybe you can even sign up from there. Once it loads, yeah, just paste that link into a new browser window or click on it and it will bring it up. And from here, you can see all the data that's already in there, but in the top right corner, there's that copy solution. And then yeah, it will force you to log in or create an account before you go ahead and do that. But you can um, choose what workspace you want to go to. Yes, and then you'll have to select the workspace, but it's pretty simple to walk through it. Smart Suite's done a good job of guiding you. We have a question coming in about sharing attachments with the owners. So can you show us how we can set up a grid view with only maybe just an attachment field and filtered out with some criteria? Sure. So this one, I think, is the only thing that has an attachment at this time. So it's pretty limited, but I will, if use you go into your, what's sorry. that, sorry? The use case is they're a general contractor and they're saving the bills from the subcontractors in the system, but they only want to be able to share with the owners, just the attachments. Okay. That makes sense. So yeah, you could do that as long as I'm understanding correctly. Let's say you had a number of expenses submitted from the contractors. But in the projects, you could just go in, or it would be in the expenses tab, but because this is where I have, oh, this isn't the right view. Okay, so yeah, in your expenses, you just go in, click duplicate view. And then from here, what you could do is the fields to display. Now, is this what you were thinking too, Emma? Just do yes. it this way. Yeah. Yes. Then you can bring in your attachments. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is, then it only shows that field and the project it's related to or the expense it's related to. And you can take it a step further if you only want to show records that actually have an attachment included. You could filter it out by the attachment field. As well as the person who's assigned to, maybe the client, maybe the subcontractor. So you can create actual reports that are customized to the exact information, who's assigned, client, all that. And then what would the shared grid view look like? And then from here, then if you go into the share view here, you can password protect it if that's important to you. But yeah, you just toggle it on and click the preview. Okay. 
there. And this is what it would look like. So yeah, it shows exactly what you've limited them to. So in this case, it's a project ID and the attachment, and then they can click on it and view whatever has been attached. And then, yeah, as Emma said, you can get more advanced or keep it as simple as you want by depending on who's it, who it's assigned to or the specific project or contractor or whoever. Yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions? Zach was very thorough, but, oh, okay. We do have a question. Can it be an export to a zip file so we can share it with them? Yes. If you're talking about being able to like download whatever view as an Excel or CSV file, that is possible. Just the, there's the three dots over here. You can click export and you have these different options here. You can export it directly into a Google sheet, Microsoft Excel, CSV, and a PDF even. I hope that answered your question. Okay, one more question or a couple more questions. How can I share with the client only the tasks and expenses they are linked to the project of this client? So a few things if you could show, maybe just a, the assignee permission would just be the assigned client. And then another way of doing this is creating a report for each client that you have and then giving them that shareable link, maybe encrypted with a password that they can see the live status in real time. Maybe just show a few things like that. Yeah, the one thing that I already showed is in the document designer. This isn't a live, um, I don't know if they were asking specifically for a live view, but say if it's at the end of each week or every two weeks, whatever, you'd have this available to you. Was it the expenses they were referencing, Emma? Expenses, projects, all of it. So expenses okay. are good for document designer. Projects yeah. may be good for the view. A, live, a shared view. So very similar to what I've done just here with the permits. Uh, you could just bring in your due date, the open tasks, and I get rid of this. And again, you can just share the view. Oh, and you could even get a step further here, filter by the contact, link to contacts is exactly, and you can select your contact. Whoops. And then, yeah, you can share that view as well. And then they can have a live view of what's going on. And you can bring in the tasks and expenses and depending on what you're trying to share with them directly, I guess that you're not able to click into it, but you could go into the tasks and do something very similar. Just filter by who the contact is and basically whatever filters or grouping types that you need to be able to allow whoever the end user is to view just the information they need. It's all doable within a lot of these buttons across the top here with groups and filters and the shared view here, of course. Great. Yeah. And you can actually allow them to click open the records if you check it. One, one more thing. Well, I guess we were just bringing in a lot of questions. Because, yeah. Thank you. Very specific questions too. So. I can tell that you guys are thinking about your construction use case. Any suggestions on selected selection purchased items specific to each project, then visible in a full list to the warehouse manager? Let's create a report, items grouped by project, and then let's create maybe a view that we can share with the warehouse manager, if that's good. Yeah, so stop me if I'm confused or not doing what you're what you had in mind. So from expenses, is that what you're saying? Based off of the project? Is that what's um, being asked? Items to each project. Yeah, I guess this would work. And then maybe just group it by project. I think you already have that. Yeah, so let's group by, by project. Okay. Yeah, uh, and a full list visible to warehouse manager. So yeah, so the same thing, you could give them access to this to this application, or you can share a view with them. And I actually already have that kind of set up here. Again, you can hide by right clicking, you can collapse or remove from display, hiding each field that's relevant or not relevant. And then the fields to display here, this is where you can repopulate them to show them. So yeah, currently I have it grouped by project. And then the same thing, you just go over to the share view. You got your different settings here, depending on what you need to come up with, just turn on the shared view and just copy this link and you can share that with 
the warehouse manager. I think that's what you were asking, Christy. They don't even have to be a smart suite user. No. Um, just, yeah. Yeah, the shared view would be good as well. And also, you have that password ability to be able to hide some of that stuff. It also updates in real time. So if you make changes that if they have that link, it'll be reflected unless you regenerate it, but it will be reflected. So when they have that weekly meeting or they just need to check in to see what's going on, it's always that active and up-to-date link. Yeah. Okay, let's see. If, so invoices for the document designer, someone was mentioning how we could create invoices. So it looks like you've already mentioned that, but do you want to so, just... Yeah, it would be a similar setup to what I have done for the projects to expenses. I'll just click back into projects here. So I have somewhere blind right now. So I have a linked record back to your expenses. Invoices, what you would need to do is just create a separate app that's called, you could call it line items, and then you would have an app called invoices and do the same thing. You just have to link the record from the invoices to the line items. And then from there, you could go into the document designer. So it's once the link's created between, in my case, projects expenses, and then your document designer here. And then you would add your field of, which I've already added, not showing up there, but anyway, you would add the linked record field, and this is where it will list it out for you. Something that I've seen quite a bit is, for example, if you have track installations, a bunch of different products or services that they offer. What I've seen before and what I've built for customers is like a list of the products with the price point. And when they go for an order, you would just link the products or the services that they need. And through our, through our lookup, but also the rollup of the linked record, you can actually determine the entire value of the order or project or service by separating the two different apps. Do you mind just adding two apps? Let's add two products and a price point and we can see how what that would look like just because that's so common when I'm working with customers. Yeah, let's do order actually. Okay, so for products, let's do HVAC installation. This could be product or service, by the way. Let's add one more window installation. So let's add a currency for that. Let's just make it, we can make it really cheap today. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Uh, and then let's go to orders. Um, now let's say that this first order has both of those products or services involved. Okay. If you create that linked record. Linked record. And then you want to link that to the products we just created. Okay, and then in this case, we do want to allow linking to multiple records because they can have multiple products on the order. And then here, we'll just add an order number. And once you click into the linked record, you can select all of your products that are relevant to this order. So it brings that in. And then from here, if you want to do a roll up, And do a sum of. So let's label the product cost. Yeah. Now I'm going to take it a step further because usually it's not just the product. There's the labor fee. Maybe there's some sort of diagnostic fee. So let's add one more fee. We could call it the diagnostic fee. So the same order is good. Oh, same order. Okay. Yeah. So the list of projects, that app is just dedicated for you managing the different costs of each product or service. And then in this order, um, there may be a service charge or diagnostic fee that is based on the type of product. Maybe if it's a window installation, you have a set fee, prepayment, all that. So let's add a, another currency field and we'll call it the diagnostic fee. This can be any form of fee, any form of additional expense for the order. Then we add that there. So let's go ahead and make it however much you want, 20 bucks, $500. Wow. 
Zach's charging. Got expensive. The diagnostic fees we were getting, yeah. Great. And then let's also add a labor cost. So another currency field per hour. So let's call it hourly labor rate. Perfect. This will add the hours worked. I'm assuming you know that what direction I'm going in here. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, and let's also add the number of tax or number of people on the job as well, because there may be more than one person here. Okay. Labor um, community or something. Yeah. Oh, it would be number. I do that all the time. I do. Yeah. I type in what I want it to be. Yeah. Type in the name first. I keep yeah. doing it every single day, all day long. Yeah. <laughs> we should have some sort of AI that just knows. Maybe. Yeah. That'll come. I'm um, sure that's coming. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's just do a couple people. Perfect. Okay. So now that we have the products, there's cost to that. There's the diagnostic fee. Then we have the labor and we want to know how much is this whole entire order going to be charged? How much are we going to charge our client or how much is this job going to cost for us? Let's create a formula and we'll go ahead and add all of this. So there's many ways that you can create this formula, but go ahead and do the type in the roll up, which is product cost. cost perfect and we'll want to add the the labor and the we want this in a sum function or you can or just not. add them add the diagnostic fee and then add the do we multiply all of the employee times that <laughs> we'll have to do that too we'll so do that yeah add um, and then the parentheses for the i'm really labor yeah multiplied by estimated hours worked times number of employees yeah. i guess i don't know if that's necessarily relevant depending on how you've quoted it but yeah uh, employee number this could be used just also for them determining how much is it going to cost them as a company yeah so you have your internal workflow embedded with your actual what the client's seeing so as you can see the formula calculated perfectly that is the total order and we could separate it as internal cost. And then you can see how much profit your company is making based on how much it's costing them. So right now we're just showing you the capabilities of the different, of course you can make a bill. So you can do a lot with this. You can create some sort of invoice for your customer based on the diagnostic fees and the product costs or services, anything like that. You can do that as well. And you can also create some sort of internal log for how much you're paying your employees, how much it's going to cost you internally as a company. Document designer for cash flow. So we're making this much, but it's going to cost us this much to pay our employees. And this is how much we're going to profit this month. So I don't want to get too detailed, but I'm just trying to get some ideas going for everyone. If you do have questions, since we're running out of time, you see that little chat icon in the bottom right corner. If you want to just click into that at the very bottom. So right now, if you have questions, you can join office hours, which is that link right there. And our onboarding specialists will be on there to answer any questions you have. If you want help right now, if you have some questions, you can go into messaging, which will allow you to reach us. And lastly, if you are a construction company and you are ready to start talking about your workflows and are interested in working with Zach, please sign up with his partner link. And if you want, you can put in your email in the chat if you're comfortable and they can reach out to you if you're yeah. comfortable. I know yeah. Zach is still transitioning jobs, but soon he'll be a full-time consultant. I'm not sure how much availability he has for the next month, but he'll be with us fully soon. So there's my email there. Availability comes and goes pretty quickly, but in the coming months, that should be changing. And we'll be able to have kind of some full-time availability. Zach, that was a really great webinar. I'm excited for to educate people about the construction industry just because I feel like I've seen so much of it. And I think this is a really great opportunity for people to really innovate their processes and stop using those spreadsheets and clipboards that people have been using still. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Emma. Thanks for letting me ramble on about awesome technology that you guys have provided.
everyone. And I'm excited to see what's continuing to be released by you and your team. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you so much. And it looks like we're getting some great feedback. So I really appreciate you doing this and it was very well done. Thanks everyone for joining and we'll see you at our next webinar. Our next webinar is May 2nd and our CEO will be hosting this webinar and he's going to showcase our new AI features. So if you're impressed today, you will be extra impressed. Absolutely. Check that one out. It's pretty cool. I just saw a small piece of it last week there. So it's, it's exciting. Great. All right. Thanks so much. And we will talk soon, Zach. Absolutely. Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye, everyone.